I can't let you blow up President Grant's train, Mr. Lyle. Actually, you have to understand, this is for the best. After I strike this blow, the people will be inspired to fight. The South shall rise again. War's over, Mr. Lyle. Been over for years now. But unfinished. Come now, Ashley, you should be on my side here. You know your daddy would have supported me. He gave his life for the Southern Don't cause. Don't you dare, sir. Don't you dare try to invoke my daddy's name. My daddy died fighting for his home, for his family, and for Texas. I know for damn sure he didn't ah. die so a bunch of addle-brained cutthroats and murderers could play soldier. Ain't no way I'm gonna let you make any more kids into orphans. Not today. And that's the climax of 1931's Ashley Porter, Girl Cavalry Scout, starring the 17-year-old Tina Manning. I'm Kevin Randall Christo, and this is the beginning of our journey through... 75 Years of Ashley Porter. Ashley Porter, Girl Calvary Scout, is the story of a girl first rejected. But I can shoot as well as any of the boys, and ride better than all of them. And Shadow, she's the best darn horse in the whole territory. But eventually commissioned as the first girl in the United States Cavalry by the President himself. <laughs> and this was hardly the end of Ashley's adventures, or the beginning. Ashley Porter was introduced to the American public in a series of popular dime novels published in the 1870s. The earliest Ashley Porter novels and their movie adaptations stuck fairly close to the standard tropes of the Western genre. Novels introduced more fantastical elements such as Jane Porter, Ashley's sister who has a talent for spiritualism, and the movies would get stranger still. Get your cotton picking fangs off my sister, Count. Why, my dear Captain Porter, so glad you could join us. But you must wait your turn. You will both make delightful vampire brides. <laughs> what? Impossible. You dare. What, you thought the Lone Ranger was the only one who can use a silver bullet? That werewolf gal's getting away! Not for long. Get her, Shadow!
Like my grandpappy always said, never send a wolf to run a bakery. Anyways. Ashley even went into outer space for this movie serial. Ashley Porter approaching, your highness. What do you mean, Ashley Porter approaching? Porter? Here? Impossible! Lightning shield has failed, Your Majesty. No. We're being boarded. Don't let her reach the bridge. Fancy lightning shield wouldn't stand up to a good old American 50 cal machine gun. No! <gasps> My grandpappy always said, never trust a gal who wears a pointy hat. Ain't that right, Shadow? As the Second World War approached, Ashley's adventures were increasingly set in the present day against temporary adversaries like the Nazis. But more fantastic enemies often showed up at the same time. We think Major Koth, our old friend from Abvir Section 2, is behind a recent guerrilla uprising in the USSR. Ah, like the anti-fascist partisans in Spain? No, no. The big primates. The Uzbek lowland guerrillas are revolting. Uzbek lowland guerrillas? I ain't never heard of such a thing. Very few have, Captain. Very few have. Ashley Porter became one of the first Americans to join the war. With the hasty reshooting of key scenes, her latest in-production film was released in late December. Ashley Porter and the Death's Hand Legion presents the untold story of another December 7th Axis assault. This one by the German SS, using a captured alien saucer to destroy the US Atlantic fleet in Norfolk.
As in real life, the fictional Ashley was unable to prevent the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. But she did deliver this rousing speech to her countrymen. Yeah, we took a licking today. Lost a lot of good men and gals. But at least now, we've got a stand-up fight and the gloves are off. We got a war to win now and it's gonna take all of us working together to win it. So let's get cracking, America, for victory! And Ashley was in the fight for the duration. Inevitably, Ashley would team up with a star-spangled example of that new American innovation, the superhero. Later, Ashley Porter herself would don cape and tights in this film, fighting the forces of Japan and the sinister Crimson Cranium. What's it say, Stone? Hmm. And the goddess Matsu will empower a champion in China's time of greatest need. A champion with power over... Hmm, what is this character? Wind, I reckon. Uh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know? Oh, call it a hunt. But Ashley's days as a superhero were limited. Now, Sue Lin, I'm happy to leave the superhero in an avenging to you. Like my grandpappy always said, if a frog had side pockets, you'd carry a handgun. <laughs> and Ashley Porter continued fighting the good fight for the duration. After the war, the Ashley Porter series went into some kind of dry spell. In part, this was because series star Tina Manning had married and started a family, but it was also due to the changing taste of movie audiences.
Westerns became popular again in the 50s, leading to more movies with Ashley Porter in the Wild West, now as a U.S. Marshal. Later, the studio was convinced that a movie purchased from Japan needed some American star power. Scenes with Ashley Porter filmed months after the Japanese film was completed were added for its American release. All the weapons are useless against this issue. It is time to deploy our secret weapon. Prepare the nitrogen phase cannon. If a frog had side pockets, he'd carry a handgun. Ready the nitrogen phase cannon. Like my grandpappy always said, every long journey begins with a tin horn and a sack full of tree nuts. But with the changing tastes of moviegoers and an aging star, Ashley Porter was clearly on the way out. Or was she? Be sure to join us for part 2 of this Diamond Anniversary Special and learn how Ashley Porter was revived for the Jet Age and beyond. But until then, I'm Kevin Randall Christo for Embiggen Pictures, wishing you a good night. Thank you.